to solve the same problem in the CM frame. So the first thing we do is to find how fast the CM frame is moving. So the velocity of the center of mass is equal to 2m times this velocity. So again, we're taking light weights as positive, plus m times a negative v. So it's moving in the left direction, divided by 2m plus m. And then the numerator is just mv, denominator is 3m, so we get v over 3. So the center of mass is moving at a velocity of 1 over 3v. So from the perspective of the center of mass, this mass over here is moving to the right at a speed of 2 over 3v. And then this mass over here is coming towards us with a speed of 4 over 3v. So using this, we can very, uh, very easily find the, uh, the final velocity after the collision. Because as a rule, in the CM frame, uh, in the perspective of the CM frame, after an elastic collision, these particles are just gonna will still have the same speed, but they will just switch signs. So this is coming towards us; it's going to recede uh, away from us. So that's that's a rule you can derive for the CM frame. Uh, David Moran proves it in his book, so I won't go over that again. So we're gonna use that rule directly. So after the collision. So I shouldn't draw the arrow in this direction because it's going to switch signs. So for the mass of 2m, after the collision, it's going to go in the opposite direction, but at the same speed. So it's a switching signs. And then the same for this particle. So before it was coming towards us, now it's going to move away. And then it's going to retain its speed. And then remember, this is in the perspective of the CM frame. So the CM frame is moving rightwards as v over 3. So using this, we can deduce their, res their respective velocities in the lab frame. So uh, if you find it difficult to kind of like always to shift to shift from frame to frame, uh, one easy method I find uh, to do this is to draw a diagram. So say you're at the lab frame, and then you have this vector that's pointing to the particle. So this is the position vector from the lab frame. And then I can also draw another arrow, another vector to the CM, to the center of mass. And then from the center of mass, I can draw another vector to the particle. And then if we take the derivative of these uh, vectors, essentially it's just uh, we just get the velocities. So after the after the derivative, taking the derivative, this vector essentially becomes the velocity of the cm. This becomes the velocity with respect to the cm, and then this becomes the 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 velocity you see in the lab frame. So if we want to find the velocity in the lab frame, we just need to add the velocity of the CM frame plus the velocity of the particle with respect to the CM frame. So in our case, this particle is moving at uh, the, the velocity that this particle is moving at the lab frame is equal to the velocity of the CM frame plus the velocity with respect to the CM frame, which we found is equal to negative 2 over 3 times V. So this is equal to negative 3 uh, V over 3. So this agrees with our previous result. And then we do the same thing for this particle. So the velocity of the CM plus the velocity of the particle with, with respect to the CM is equal to 5 over 3v. So once again, this agrees with our previous result. And then you see that using the center of mass, we actually avoided all the algebra that we had to deal with before. So before we had all these uh, annoying polynomials and a quadratic equation. And now all we have to do is just to apply the rule that the velocity switches signs and then we can very easily find our answer.